Taylor here with AgriSpray Drones. Today we're doing a full live demo of the Agris T20P. Now the T20P is really in my mind a spot spraying drone or a small field application drone, maybe even a specialty use application drone. But for our case right now, we're in a soybean field, we've got some spots of weeds that we wanna go out and spray. And so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to drag the T40 out here. You know, the drone itself weighs 80 pounds, plus a battery, plus payload, and then it doesn't have a long flight time either. Whereas the T20P weighs a lot less, much easier to maneuver from field to field, and everything we need fits in the back of a truck. So we're gonna show you exactly how to set up a spot spraying mission, how to do spot spraying with the Agris T20P. Let's get started. So like I said, everything fits in the back of the truck and the drone is very easy to take out and move with one person. It is empty with no battery right now. And with the battery in it, it's gonna weigh right around 80 pounds. And we're using the T40 battery. Now we use the T40 battery on the T20P because it increases the flight time substantially. There is a T20P battery, but it's about half the size. So with the T40 battery, you can get by with just using two batteries and one charger, and you can spray all day long with the T20P. Not only that, but you got a lot longer flight time, which is great for spot spraying. You can see the T20P is almost exactly the same size as far as diameter and arm length as the T40. The arms are a bit smaller in diameter uh, because you've only got one motor on here. Uh, there's not as much weight, obviously, on the ends of the arms, and so our brackets are a bit smaller, the arms uh, are a bit uh, smaller in diameter, but the props are the same size, meaning that the overall width and length of the drone is almost exactly the same as the T40. Uh, it is a bit shorter than the T40, uh, but other than that, everything is very, very similar. Same motors, same prop, same ESC, same radar, same camera. The tank sensors uh, are the same for the, the scale, the pumps, the flow meter, obviously the battery, uh, and the spray system uh, back here, all the same as the Agris T40. All right, let's go ahead and get our remote and we'll show you guys how to set up. What we're gonna do first is uh, a mapping mission. So you don't have to do mapping missions to do spot spraying, but it can be a really, really cool feature with the Agris T40 or the T20P. They both have this capability where you can actually have it fly over the field and map the area that you wanna spray. That way you can see a live image uh, of that field and you can find those spots, find those weeds that you wanna spray. Okay, so I'll get in here and first, uh, what we're gonna do today just so I can show you guys a few more things, is a fruit tree mapping mission. Now you can do a fruit tree or you can do a route mapping. With route mapping, you've got, uh, you can do up to 30 acres um, as far as one, you know, flight, one map. Fruit tree, it's 13, but you can do some pretty cool stuff with it. So we're just gonna add a field. And the terrace channels are mainly what I'm, what I'm wanting to map here. So we're gonna make sure that we get most of these terrace channels in here. Won't do a very big map this time just because it's uh, for show. Okay, make sure everything looks good. We have 11 acres on here, 385 photos. Okay, five minute flight time. All right, all that looks good. So I'll confirm. We'll call this demo spot spray. save it all right drone's good to go our battery's at 90 percent. that's plenty of battery i'll go through and check my settings make sure everything else is good uh it's gonna hover whenever it's done that's good okay yeah we're ready to start now so all i have to do is connect my rtk which is connected restart the drone that way it reboots the rtk all right we got rtk connected right now 
And if you guys are curious, we're actually using uh, cellular RTK. Uh, Digifarm is the service that we're, that we're using. And this is great because you don't have to have a base station uh, that you're gonna haul around with you, that you're gonna have to sit in the same spot every time. This is a cellular RTK network. I just have a hotspot on my phone that is connected to the remote. Uh, I don't need a hotspot other than for the fact that I need to connect to Digifarm service. And all you have to do is you know, connect to the server, uh, log into your password, and as long as you're in the coverage area, then you've got RTK. Uh, it goes to the cellular networks. Really, really cool. It connects super fast, so we love using it. Uh, if you guys are wanting to know more about Digifarm, uh, we, we can help you out, get started with that. Okay, so uh, we're ready to go here. I'm gonna reload this field, tap on it. Uh, should be good to go. And yeah, hit start. It's gonna load everything from the remote to the drone. Go through these again, Look, everything looks good. All right, we're ready to take off now. Start task. Task complete. Reload it again. Start task. Aircraft preparing to take off. So, what the drone's gonna do is it's gonna go up to 60 feet. After I there, saw some obstacles. All right. Radar's a little sensitive on the, on the T20P sometimes. Okay, so it's gonna go to 60 feet, and then it's gonna go uh, to the area on the map that we had it start first. Point the camera straight down and just start taking pictures. Uh, it's going to take quite a few pictures. It's going to take about five minutes to do this. Whenever it's done, it's going to process the imagery and stitch it on the map on the screen. So while this is flying, doing its job, uh, I'm going to take a break and we'll get back to you whenever it's done. Okay, so our map's done processing now. We can go ahead and go in and start marking the areas that we want to spray. Now, I process this on what's called tree mode or orchard mode. And so what this does is it does a few things. It allows us to have an AI layer. So basically what it tries to do whenever you're actually making, mapping an orchard, it actually maps every, the tops of every tree. It AI recognizes trees and leaves, things like that. So you can see on the top of the screen here, that's what I marked in purple right there is tree. But effectively what this means is that every purple area is sprayed area because it's designed to spray orchards, which means you can also mark the areas that you uh, want to uh, spray you know, weed-wise as purple. And so if we zoom in, we'll try to find some places we want to spray. Uh, this field's kind of clean actually, so there's not a lot of weeds out of here. But let's say this area right here would be a patch of weeds. So let's go in and turn our AI layer on, hit modify result, and then we can mark this area as a tree area. Okay. And then we can turn our AI back off. We'll look for another area right here. Let's say this area right here is a, is a patch of weeds. We'll modify the result, mark that area as purple spray area. Okay, that's good. We got two areas. We can, we can keep going if we want just by turning off the AI, looking for other areas, uh, and marking those as purple. So what does this all mean? Well, what we can do now is we can actually add a field around these purple areas. So we'll do a predefined field, and we're going to add our waypoints. So there you can see it actually set it up to where it's going to spray one and then go to the other. And we can move our route and make this a bit more efficient. There we go, that looks pretty good I think, or good enough anyways. Um, so there you can see the drone's gonna start down here. 
spray this purple area and then automatically go to this purple area and spray it. So it takes a bit to get set up, but once you do this, you can set up you know, 10 different spots for it to spray and it does it all automatically. I'll show you exactly what I mean. We're gonna go ahead and set up um, all of our other parameters, fill the drone and, and, uh, and spray this. So I'll set my height, we're gonna do 10 feet. Route spacing, so the T20P actually has Depending on your parameters, uh, probably about 75 to 80 percent of the route spacing or the swath width that the T40 has, just because of the way the nozzles are set up and the way the props are set up. Uh, the only reason that it's less than the T40 is because of the weight. Uh, it's just less. So we're going to just call this 25 feet swath width. And there you can see it made my route even simpler. And click OK. Save this field. And then now we're going to st hit start. Turn our sprayer back on. Do this by application rate. We're gonna put on three gallons per acre. Pretty common for uh, herbicide. Flat 25 feet per second. Okay, all that's good. Now what we're missing is our payload. We use a 12 volt pump just because it's a lot quieter and a lot lighter and doesn't take much power. Now, while the camera was off, I actually swapped the battery. So we have a fresh battery in here right now. Uh, the battery came back with about 50% um, left in it or 50% charge level. That should be all we need for this mission. Pull that out. Okay, everything else looks good. We're gonna check our droplet size. It is kind of windy today, so we're gonna put this on very coarse, especially with herbicide. Of course, we're spraying water right now, but if we were spraying herbicide, then you want a very coarse droplet to reduce your drift as much as possible. Okay, everything else looks good. Check our settings one more time. All that's good. All right, I want to back up and hit start. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention. Uh, so you see this green dotted line uh, right around the edge of this field. So this is uh, when you do 3D flight route mapping, you have to actually be within that dotted line and the drone is actually, as you can see, right just outside of that dotted line. Uh, it only happens with 3D flight route mapping and spraying missions. So what we'll do is we're actually going to take off manually and start it when we get out in there. So there we're inside that green line. I'll hit start. It's going to upload to the drone. All looks good there. Slide to the right, now it's gonna to go to work. And I should note that, you know, everything we're doing mapping wise, the T40 can also do this, um, but because the T20P just is able to fly longer with a full tank, it makes a lot more sense to have the T20P do this. Because whenever you're doing spot spraying, you are flying and not spraying more than you are flying and spraying. And so uh, a long hover time with a full tank makes a lot of sense. There you see it's dropping down. I'll zoom in here so we can watch it. Uh, it's dropped down to about uh, 10 feet. Now it's actually, this is, uh, this is 3D flight route mapping. And so it's not using the radar height. Uh, it's not using the radar to get its height. It's actually using uh, the, the map, the camera that, uh, you know, it took pictures from, you know, 60 feet elevation and it actually used what's called a point cloud from that can those uh, pictures to do its, uh, its terrain following. This means you can actually use this for uh, really steep terrain, um, not just flat fields. As you can see right now we have, this isn't super steep, um, but we are flying over terraces and it did a pretty good job actually mapping the elevation of those terraces. So I finished up that southern side there. It's flying on the northern side right now. Like I said, if you had 10 different areas like this, 
then it would just go from one to the next, to the next, to the next. We can turn our camera on, look down, you can see we just went over a patch of uh, what would have been weeds if they hadn't been sprayed already last week. If you, if you don't use this 3D flight route mapping and you just map with the, you know, the regular two-dimensional flight route mapping, uh, you can do the same thing. You just have to make each one of these areas, you know, so each of these areas like right there, um, as its own boundary and then have to load each boundary from one to the next. Okay, so there you see on the map we've got our two areas that it just sprayed. It marked those out in green. But I did notice that down here by these trees, we actually have a patch of weeds that I just, I just saw just by looking over there. It wasn't actually on our map here. And so what we can do is we can switch over to manual plus on here, hit M plus, go to the left, and we're gonna hit our template. I think we have, well, let's see what that is. All right, we got a template in here for something else. I'll change it to three gallons, flight speed 23, route spacing, everything looks, looks good. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of that. We're gonna pull up our camera and we're gonna fly down to that area and run manual plus. Manual plus is really useful uh, for spot spraying whenever you don't want to map an area out and you kind of already know where all your weeds are at. And you kind of got just, you know, maybe just some small areas, small patches of weeds. Okay, so right here, hard to see from the camera, but from coming, Looking where I'm looking right now, that's uh, there's quite a few weeds in there. So once I hit start on here, save and run, it's gonna lower down to that 9.8 feet that we set. It's gonna hold that altitude. All I do is push right on this right stick here, or push forward on the right stick, and it's gonna run that pump. There it sprang. I let go, and it's gonna come to a stop, and it's gonna stop spraying. I want to do one more pass, so I'm going to go and click that button. It's going to go over to the one pass to the right, flip around. Then all I do is just push forward again, and it's going to start spraying, holding altitude, holding speed, you know, making sure it's only putting on that three gallons per acre like we wanted it to do. Really, really useful tool. Okay, I think that pretty much takes care of that area of, of weeds, so we can end that. And if you wanted to do another area, all you have to do is just hit disable, and hit start again and you could uh, you could do another patch. But that's it for us. I think we got most of the weeds covered. The beauty of this is we didn't have to track through our fields. So if you've got a muddy field or you got crops out here like we do right now, especially if they were taller, then running them down with a sprayer, that would be, uh, that would affect your yield. This is manual flight right here. All right, guys, the T20P is back here. We just sprayed our three spots, two of them with the automated uh, spot spraying with the mapping process, and one of them with the manual plus uh, spot spraying. The great thing is we did all that and we only used about 30% of our battery. With the T40 battery inside the T20P, this makes it a perfect uh, drone for spot spraying. And if you already have a T40 and you're looking to do more spot spraying, utilizing a T20P is actually not that uh, difficult, not that hard on the wallet either because you only have to get a T20P with the remote and that's it. You've already got the batteries for your T40, they work in your T20P. You probably already got uh, parts on the shelf for your T40 and the T20P utilizes most of those same parts. So that is a really cool feature making the T20P uh, probably the best small, when I say small, I mean 20 liter and, and below drones that's gonna be out there. Um, and you can see everything fits in the back of a truck. Um, of course, we don't have our generator in here, but of course we use the, uh, the Ford with the, uh, with the generator built inside. So, but yeah, it just goes to show you that a half ton pickup, 100 gallon tank, and charger, two batteries, drone, that's all you need to go do some spot spring with the T20P. Couldn't say the same thing with the T40. I hope that helps answer some questions about what's uh, the usefulness with the T20P. If you guys have questions about what we did here on the mapping side, uh, if you want to get a T20P uh, or you want to learn more or start using Digifarm, uh, then let us know. I'll be glad to help you out. Thanks.